So let's talk about you know, reports from a you know, very high level. So let's take it up about 10,000 feet. So we have report types. So think of report types as the object and the field references. Okay? An admin, an administrator, can create different report types. They can create custom report types and bring together you know, two objects, create a relationship with those and their fields to make those available for reports. So when, you have, when you're in the report, you can add filters and selectivity to that report to really make it your own. And then those custom reports, those turn into dashboards. Okay? So there's, a, there's many different components that we'll look at. We'll look at components uh, like funnel charts, bar charts, line charts, that type of thing that you can add to those, to those dashboards. So let's set the foundation. So what is a report? So a report is informational. So it's that set of records that meet that criteria. And what I mean by that, and Sonia's going to show it to you, is filters. Okay, there's certain filters that we can use. There's standard filters that come with Salesforce, and there's some custom filters that we're going to add to, to our report. We also have a lot of standard templates out there for Salesforce. So you don't have to even know how to create a report. You just go out to the report tab, you click on reports, and Salesforce already provides you with a lot of standard report templates for you already. And then we have custom reports. So if you take one of those standard reports and you customize it with different fields, you move fields in, you move fields out, that's a custom report now. All right? So what is a dashboard? The biggest thing about a dashboard, it's visual. It's that visual representation. It's a snapshot of key data, so we make sure that you're having your key information in that dashboard that you want to present. But most importantly, it's actionable and it's meaningful, and it's not overdone. We want to make sure that when we're presenting the dashboard, it's not overdone, there's not a lot of bells and whistles there, so we can keep focused. And dashboards are based on those custom reports that we're, that we're going to create. So Steve did a good job getting us set up to actually dive in to scrape the surface of building the report um, and how to approach the report. I'm going to take you through actually building that report out. Um, we're going to start with going to the report screen and just looking at where the reports live, where the dashboards live. Then we're going to go in and create a new report for Cirrus and then come back and hand it over and Kevin's going to add that report that we created to a dashboard. So before we get started, um, quickly want to touch on the four kind of flavors of reporting that Salesforce gives you. Um, every report you create will be a tabular report to start, okay? It's a lot like an Excel spreadsheet, has columns and headers, um, just very basic report. You can easily change that from a tabular report into a, into a summary report, as Steve was showing us, um, and add groupings by at least one field. And then matrix and join reports take it a little bit further. We're not going to get into those today, but it's a way to group things by horizontal and vertical criteria. Um, a join report lets you see more than one report type in a single report. So let's jump right into the demo. Okay. All right. Okay, so you all should have this reports tab. And it's kind of an overwhelming screen, so I want to break it down for you. Um, starting with what we see here, we see kind of a hodgepodge of reports and dashboards. Uh, you have the ability over here on the right to actually decide whether you want to look at just reports or just dashboards. This is really handy, especially if, if you have a lot in the system. You also have the ability to only look at items that maybe you've recently viewed or that you've created or maybe that you're following on Chatter. You can also follow them directly from this screen here as well. You can search um, by typing right into the search bar and your results come up right away. Super powerful, powerful um, search capabilities there. Um, and that really comes in handy at Groupon, because like I told you, we have a lot of reports. So I don't want you to confuse this search bar with this one. Every single day, I try to search for reports here, and you will not find reports here. You will find folders here. Um, you will find report folders and dashboard folders. Report folders have this little manila icon. Dashboard folders have this little kind of chart icon here. 
but you can search for dashboard uh, report folders here and dashboard folders. Okay, so that's kind of this screen. Let's actually create a report here, new report. You can also create your new dashboard from this view as well. All right, so these are the report types that um, Kevin was telling us about. These are the standard report types that Salesforce gives you. So if you expand these sections, you see the types of reports that are available to you here. Cirrus needs a plain old opportunities pipeline report. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that and create. But it is worth mentioning that as Kevin was saying, you can go as an administrator, you can go into the back end and create custom report types. So if you start, you know, say you create a custom object that hangs off of the opportunity, you want a way to report on opportunities with that custom object, you have the ability to go in and create a report for that. And it will show up in whichever folder you put it in. All right, so now we're in the report builder. And until you come to the screen a few times, it might be a little overwhelming to you. The first thing you're going to, uh, I'm gonna note is that this is an unsaved report. So if you navigate away from this, you'll lose everything. It's kind of like writing an essay and not saving it in time. So once you get to a, uh, a point where you feel comfortable with the report you've created, you're gonna wanna save it. And uh, you'll, you can just do that by hitting the save button. If it's an existing report that you're modifying, you'd wanna do a save as. So on this left-hand screen, it's kind of like the fields, fields area. Now, Groupon has 10, or, Groupon has a thousand fields on the opportunity. That's the max. Just want to note that. Um, I don't condone that. Um, so <laughs> it, it makes it hard to kind of know what to pull into your report. And, and Steve was saying that you want to limit what you're giving your users. So Salesforce gives you a lot here. Um, they give you quite a lot of fields. You don't need all of these, so we're going to clean that up in a minute. But first on this left-hand side, you have the ability to type right into this search bar here and find the fields you want. You also have the ability to filter only maybe text fields, number fields, date fields, or just look at everything. So from here, you can add and remove fields to the report builder preview. And I'm calling this a preview because this is not the final number of records that it's going to be in your report. Um, it'll only show you a max of 50. So sometimes people worry that they're not seeing everything and you, you won't see everything. You will when you run the report though. So we can pull fields in here by just dragging and dropping them. You can also double click and it adds them in. You can then drag them out. And it's just super easy and intuitive. Um, from, from the preview screen, you have the ability to command click multiple fields, which is super handy if you wanna remove like many fields at a time. Uh, you also have this nifty remove all columns button, which I love. It takes everything out and it really lets you start fresh. And let's go ahead and do that so we can gradually add in the fields we actually need for this report. Now they wanna know what's open, what's in the pipeline for the rest of the quarter. So. They only need a few fields, really, for this dashboard report. I'm gonna add stage, type. Uh, amount, and let's include opportunity name, too. See how I just typed name, and it just pulled it right up. It gives me all my matches, really handy. Okay, so we've really cleaned up our view here, but notice how we have stages closed one in our results, and that's not what Cirrus wants. Cirrus wants to see open opportunities. Okay, so what do we, what do, we do about that? Well, that's what this filter section is gonna help us out with. So filters are super important because it adds selectivity to report, as Kevin was saying earlier. We have over three million opportunities and growing. So when, when at Groupon, when we run a report like this, we add a lot of filters to make sure that we're extremely selective with exactly the records we need to see. In this scenario, we wanna see 
only opportunities where stage is not closed won and not closed lost. We only want to see open opportunities. There are a couple ways to do that. First, Salesforce gives us a few kind of shortcut standard filters here, and these come with each of the report types, like account has their own set of shortcuts, opportunity has these, the ability to only maybe see open, closed, closed one opportunities, or maybe only opportunities of a certain probability, maybe only opportunities that you own or that um, your team owns. So we could just say, I want to see open opportunities. But I want to also show you how to add a custom filter. It's a little bit more flexible, so we're going to do that. Also, this date field, Steve showed us this already, but this is so incredibly important, especially when you have a lot of records in the database or you anticipate adding a lot of records. Adding a date range to every report, I cannot emphasize enough how it will speed up the system getting the records back for you. It's very helpful. So, oops. So in this filters dropdown, you can add a field, field filter. You can do a bunch of other stuff that we're not going to kind of touch on today. We're going to really just talk about the field filters, but there's a lot of really kind of complex filter logic you can get into. We just need to add a field filter for stage. And we can type right into this and say that stage, add an operator, we don't want it to equal anything. We want it to not equal our options of closed one and closed lost. Now, see how I chose a field, and then I used this little hourglass and allowed it to kind of tell me what my options are. I don't want to use closed one opportunities. I don't want to see closed lost opportunities. So I'm selecting these, and it put them in this little comma uh, separated list here for me. I could have just typed this in. I could have just typed closed one, comma, closed lost. That would have worked just fine. Hit OK. And now we have a nice filtered view of our results. So we're getting closer to what Cirrus wants. But in order to get this on a dashboard, we need to do two more things, actually three more things. We need to summarize this report by something. In this case, we need to summarize it by stage because we want to see a funnel report by stage. So we can do that in a couple ways. From this view, we can change the report from a summary or from a tabular to a summary report right from here. If I do that, Salesforce is going to ask, okay, but how do you want to group it? Now, we want to group it by stage, but you can group it by something that's not even in your report yet. You can just pull in a new field. I could group it by created by if I wanted to. But we want to group it by stage, so I'm just going to drag this into this grouping area here. And see how I easily just turned that from a tabular report into a summary report. The last thing we need to do before we save it is add a chart. Uh, quick funny story about this, actually. I was, my husband works on Salesforce, too, and he's been working on Salesforce for years. The other day, he tried to get a report on a dashboard, and he could not figure out why it wasn't appearing. He couldn't add it. He created a summary, he saved it publicly, which we're about to do, and he didn't add a chart. If you don't add a chart, if you don't add a, a, a grouping and you don't add a chart, it will not be available to show up on the dashboard. So you will not find it. You'll rack your brain for the rest of your life and you won't figure out what's going on. So remember to add a chart, which we're going to do right now. So Salesforce gives us a bunch of options and see how it's grouped here? Our bar chart is already grouped by stage because we told it how to group these charts. In our case, we want to use a funnel report. And, and uh, Kevin will look at these, report, or these chart types a little bit later when he gets to the dashboard. So let's just click funnel. And here it is, our funnel grouped by stage. Click OK. And now we have a nifty chart on our report. Let's go ahead and run this now. So we're exiting the report builder and we've run the report. 
we now have all of the results back. That final grand total of results is going to be here, okay? Now, a few things I want to know. First of all, this chart is massive. <laughs> I like to make my charts smaller because they take up less real estate on the page. So you can just click small. And there we are. Now, we have our results listed out here. If you want to, you can hide details. Just make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. If you just want to get totals instead, it's kind of nice to, uh, to not see your actual results there. It's also, might I add, a lot um, easier on the database when it has to retrieve the information if you have a lot of records. Um, to always hide details, it's just, it makes Salesforce run faster. So a few things up here. We have some filters. These look like different filters, but these are the same kind of filter, standard filter shortcuts that we saw in the report builder, okay? So there's actually a lot you can do from this view that, um, without going back into the report builder. Like if you wanna change the date range, it defaulted us to the current quarter, which is great, that's perfectly fine. But if we wanted to change this to you know, next quarter, we could do that, like Steve showed us. If we wanted to change um, one of these filters to maybe only look at closed or closed one, we could do that, and so on. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is that we, we summarized our report in Report Builder. We changed it from a tabular to a summary report in that screen, but you can also do that here. If you have a tabular report and you, you decide to summarize information by, you're changing it from a tabular to a summary report from this view as well. So, some nice little shortcuts here. Now, let's see this because we, it's not, a, like the dashboard won't find it because it doesn't exist yet, basically. So let's go ahead and save as and give it a meaningful name. I'm gonna call it Dreamforce. If I can type funnel report 2013. I guarantee you adding descriptions will help. Please do it. it sometimes you're, when you're in a rush, you don't want to, but opportunities this quarter. And then notice how it defaults to my personal custom reports folder. Don't save it there. That means you're saving it to your own folder. No one can find it. Uh, <laughs> I recently had an issue with some dashboards I group on and couldn't troubleshoot them, couldn't find the reports because they'd been running off of someone's personal folder and just using a hyperlink to get to them. A, a team lead just sent out a hyperlink so that somebody, sorry, don't do that. It's bad. Um, I will make fun of you. So save it to a, a report folder with a meaningful name as well. In this case, Dreamforce 2013. You can save it and return to the report screen, or you can save it and return to the actual report, which will run the report again. And I think that's a duplicate name. Yep. So your names have to be unique. All right. So we've kind of done a lot here. We have gone through the report builder, showing you how to remove fields, add fields. Um, we've added a field filter, we've added a summary, we've added a chart, okay? There's a, we're, we're literally just scraping at the surface and Kevin's gonna sh give you some resources later that allow you to dig deeper into this because you'll all be ready really soon to dig even deep, deeper. But um, for now, we did a few basic things. We're gonna add this to a dashboard now with Kevin and I'll let him take it away. Thanks guys.